All right, let's get this thing going. Who knows how long it's going to take to get everything set up properly. Go do some tweets. Go do some tweets. Let people know to come hang out. All right. Got our little hog music going on. People are starting to join the chat. Ah, so now I know that the, the chatbot's working. Set up a little chatbot today, now I know it's working. So I'm here in Mega Studio. And we're gonna be looking at keyboards today. Gonna give a chance for some more people to join. Ah, this is probably the time when I should double check that the stream's working. And uh, get some stream inception. Because we can go to my cool overhead camera that I've set up for today. That's me. I'm using two webcams today. One here. Oh, here. One there. And I have this, I set this up too. I don't know what I'll use that for. And that is using the Stream Deck. So I've had this thing, one of these for a long time. And it sat in a drawer. I know some of my friends like Steven and David, they've set theirs up to do like useful things, but mine is just for what it's intended to do, so. So we are here today to talk about keyboards. Now, why are we talking about keyboards, right? So if you, oh, by the way, just so I want to, is are the levels okay? The music isn't too loud, you can hear me okay, all that kind of stuff. It's important for this moment in the stream to make sure I've got that correct. I did notice that when I was testing some like glitches in the cameras, Oh, we just got raided by the pen addict. The music's super quiet. I mean, I can bump that up a little bit if you want, but it's supposed to be pretty quiet. So thank you, Brad and the pen addict army for the raid. Now there's, now there's a bunch of pen nerds here, but this is actually, I think, pretty... There's like a lot of synergy, a lot of synergy between pens and mechanical keyboards, and that's how this started. So a few months ago, we had... Uh, one of my shows, Cortex, I had somebody write in and say, why doesn't Mike like mechanical keyboards? It's pretty similar to pens. It's like a hobby, it's collecting, and there's customization involved. And I was like, ah, I don't think I'm interested in that. And then had a bit of a conversation and ended up a couple of days later buying one of these. I didn't bring this with me. Uh, a keyboard switch tester. So it's like a little metal rail and it has a selection of mechanical keyboard switches in them because keep different keyboard switches feel differently um, they have a different feeling to them I'm not looking at the chat right now there's just lots and lots of pen emotes going on um, but yeah so then I, I got one of these switch testers played around a bit kind of like the feeling of what were MX Cherry Browns which is a, a, a switch and what I like about Cherry Brown switches is uh, they don't they don't have what's called a low actuation force so when you press down on the key, uh, that it's not so like, right? When you press down on the key, it's not too um, too much force needed. And that was how I wanted to try out to see if it was right for me and to make sure that it felt good to use and stuff like that. And then I ended up buying a keyboard from WASD Keyboards, which I don't have with me here because that is currently in use by my wife, Adina. I don't like that keyboard because it doesn't have any arrow keys. It's what's called a 60% keyboard, and I didn't really know what I was doing. So 60% doesn't have this or this. And this is these keys are actually full size rather than uh, the, the shorter size, like the half size or whatever. So then I ended up actually going to this one, which is the Keychron K6. I backed this on Kickstarter. And I'd heard great things about Keychron in the past from some friends like Jason Snell. And so I ended up getting one of these. So these, is not, these are not the keycaps that it came with. 
um, the keycaps that it came with were just black and um, they actually allowed for you to be able to see the RGB a bit more than this. You can kind of see the RGB is in here a little bit. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. So these keycaps don't really do a lot for that. These are called, uh, I think, NDA Nihon. So this is where it started. This was a few months ago, and I kind of got to here. And then I was like poking around a little bit more, and I had some people writing to me and stuff like that. And uh, I'm on my Windows PC, and it keeps giving me notifications. Can anybody tell me, like, is there such a thing as do not disturb on Windows? Is that like a thing that you can do? Is it called focus assist? Is that it? How do you stop notifications from coming in on a Windows PC? I stand in Dina too. That's correct. Focus assist. We'll go with that. See what happens. Um. So yeah, then I ended up. Uh, I had been using on my PC. No, sorry, on my Mac at home. Um, a Microsoft Sculpt ergonomic keyboard, which is like a keyboard that has a split in the middle. So your hands are kind of like at this angle rather than at this angle. So apparently that's meant to be good for you. Uh, I've been confirmed, but it, it is a thing called focus assist. That's good. So yeah. Uh, so now I don't have to, I don't have notifications, which I don't want. So I was like typing like this, and this was fine. I wasn't really having any problems with it, but I was thinking to myself, Oh, that's a good, that's a very good suggestion in the chat there from DPLA full that Mega, Mega Studio could be called the Podcastle. I actually really like that. That's not, a t that's not a bad name. Unfortunately, I have signage now, but I'll keep that for some future project, maybe. Podcastle, that's good. So then uh, I was wondering if there were any, so I had that sculpt keyboard, right, which had the split in the middle, it was split into two, and my hands were kind of in this position, and I found that comfortable. So I started wondering, is there such a thing as a split mechanical keyboard? And there are multiple. Uh, I moved on to then, uh, I think someone may have sent this to me as well, a product called the Ergodox. I ended up like using it for a while and I actually don't have that one with me today. What I brought with me today is the stuff that I'm actually using. The Ergodox, I've currently, like I've taken all the switches out of it because it had a bunch of cherry brown switches in it that I wanted for a different keyboard project in the future. So I just pulled all the keys, uh, the key switches out of that. But the Ergodox was two, you know, it had two sections um, and they, they were broken up in the middle. But what I didn't like about that one is it had a bunch of blank keys. So there was about, I think like maybe four or five keys on each side that had, um, they were completely blank and you were supposed to be able to program them however you wanted. But with no labeling on them, I could never remember what any of the keys did. Now, I actually have a visual aid now. So I ended up moving, yes, I can't touch type, not very confidently. Um, so I ended up moving on to a different product called the Digma Rays, which is in this case, it ships in this case. This is a keyboard that comes in white and black. And I've been using this for, uh, with my iPad mostly for a couple of months. So this is how they ship it to you. So you'll notice that right now, it is uh, it's in one solid piece, which is cool. I'll show you how that works in a second. And then they also ship you a bunch of like cables and stuff. So the way it works is you end up with these two cables going into each one of the halves like that. And then this piece in the middle joins them together. And then you have one cable going out to your computer. And this is all RGB actually. So you know, I'm gonna actually plug this in so you can see what I'm talking about. So this cable comes out. I really like this actually. I was quite surprised that they, uh, it's called the Digma, D-Y-G-M-A. That's the brand. Rays. I think they're doing a new product soon as well, but I really like this. I, I, I ordered another one in black because I wanted to have one at home and one here in the studio, but I ordered that months ago. They like, like so much stuff that, that was delayed due to COVID, but it will be coming eventually. So you have this thing. They have a name for it, but I don't remember what it is. 
I was fr the one frustration I have about this keyboard actually is like, look, you've got USB-C, USB-C goes in here and here, right? So you put one in this side and one in this side. Then that has two, U like they're both USB-C, right? So you see that. Yeah, I agree. This is fiddly, but like you only set it up once and then it's just your keyboard, right? Like how often are you? All right, anyway, so then USB-C. But then it has a USB-A connector that goes to the computer. I wish it had USB-C too. Oh man, now I need to find an empty USB port. Uh, this can get out for the moment. You'll come back later. I'll plug this in. There we go. So you can see, obviously RGB. Don't worry, I'm going to talk about these in a minute. And I actually kind of like that the little connector has RGB on it too. So you can use this keyboard in a couple of ways, right? One is just like this. Use it as a regular keyboard. Do keyboardy things. But then it comes apart. And then you've got the split. And what I like about this compared to, like, say, the Microsoft Sculpt keyboard that I was using before is that you can move it in any angle you want. And they're building a um, an add-on so that you can do what's called tenting, where you lift it up like this, because some people say it's comfortable to have your own at an angle, but I don't know about that. I really like this keyboard. I the switches feel really nice on it. It's, it I'm using Cherry Browns, but it's because it's just this solid, like not solid, but like just it's like a real nicely made thing. Oh, it has RGB underglow. That's nice. That it actually just it gives a nice sturdy base. I find it very cool. Now it is at this point in our presentation where I will tell you that I set up a second microphone today so we could do sound tests because that's what my understanding is the kids enjoy uh, ASMR and listening to keys. So let me pause my music that I've got going on. And you get to hear the keyboard a bit. So you have to look at this microphone popping in here. These are cherry brown switches. And I, they come off really well. Like they what I like about cherry browns is they have some click to them, but it they're so easy to type on. It's super comfortable because they don't require a lot of pressing. So I like I have some other switches that I'll show you later that don't sound as clicky. But, but they also do require more force. So that's this is the Digma Rays. Um, I know I've been talking a lot. Uh, if anybody has any questions in the chat, like please like fire those over, and I'll try and answer some as we go through. But I have a lot of stuff to show you as well, so we're going to be here for a bit doing that. So we will now remove uh, the sound testing microphone for a little bit, but don't worry, that will come back. Um, now these things. These are my Pokemon key artisan keycaps. Try and get the camera to focus, come on. This is the issue with using not great webcams for this. I don't have a better camera set up right now. But um, yeah, these are uh, Pokemon keycaps by a company called S-Craft Studio. And I have a Pikachu, a Gengar, and a Magikarp. It's, it's too close, come on. No, it's, just, it's not gonna focus. The focus is refused. Let me try on the other camera. There we go. Look at those things. Aren't they beautiful? Like they've got real depth to them as well. Isn't that fantastic? This company, like I was actually pretty lucky to be able to get in on this. I 
<laughs> I bought these while in LA in January when I we and the Dino took a trip to LA and we went out to visit Austin Evans and we went to Disneyland with the Sparks family and I knew that this company was releasing these because a streamer who I really like uh, his name is Alex Otos he actually designed this desk mat um, he had some of these in advance and he posted these to his Instagram and I was like, oh my God, I need to get some Pokemon keycaps. And this is like, I at this point, I only had this and I didn't really have much other thoughts about, about mechanical keyboards and as a hobby or, or an interest. But I was like, oh man, let me, oh, music, put, put the music back on. Uh, I was like, I've got to get these, right? Like I was super into it. Um, so I ended up sign, like following their Instagram, found out when the sale was going to be, um, and then ended up get, grabbing them while walking around I think I was walking around a department store because I needed a tie I forgot to bring a tie with me so I had to get a tie so yeah so at this point I'll throw I know I've already said if you had any questions ask them but I'm now actually really looking at the chat so yes I have a mix between ISO and is it ANSI so like that's the UK and the US well, not just UK and US, but like it's mostly characterized by the enter key. So this is the ISO enter key and then the American enter key just or return is this one. The Pokemon keycap price. Ooh, let me let me find that out, Brad. They weren't cheap, but if you see how much they cost aftermarket, they're an absolute steal. Um They were $35 each, but I've seen them on Reddit now in, I'm not kidding, in the hundred dollars, multiple hundreds of dollars range each. They sold out super fast, like their website broke, you know, it's like one of those kinds of deals. This is actually a thing that as I am getting more into the mechanical keyboard hobby, what I'm learning is there are lots of people like me right now that are starting to get into the mechanical keyboard hobby and it's making things incredibly difficult to buy. Everything's sold out all the time. So much stuff is bought aftermarket. Um, all right, so when was the first? All right, so the first, I don't actually remember when I got this, um, but I can find that out based on an episode of Cortex. Then I got this in January, and then I didn't really get anything until maybe a month or so ago. Basically what happened is I, I started to really enjoy the experience of this and then I started just like poking around on Instagram and looking at mechanical keyboard, like popular mechanical keyboard hashtags, following some creators that were there, people that were taking pictures and stuff. And then it just started building and then I ended up what really pushed me over the edge is Austin, who I mentioned earlier. He did a uh, video about mechanical keyboards and referenced um, a content creator streamer called... Uh, oh, there you go. Ian just put in the chat, Cortex97, uh, the share square. So in February, that was when it really had kicked off. Although I'd done some stuff earlier in January because that was when I bought these ones. But anyway... It really had kicked off. It kicked off kind of around the end of last year, but it picked up in more in in February, March time. Uh, and so Austin recommended like this uh, YouTuber and Twitch streamer called Teha Types. That's his uh, account. So I went and watched one of his videos, and I really liked the process of watching someone build a keyboard. Like, and when I say build a keyboard, like I, I actually have something to show you later on where I can. I'm not going to be doing anything today because I'm not at that stage yet, but I can kind of give you a little bit more of an idea of what it takes if you're not familiar um, and I found it kind of really relaxing to watch him build and then ended up from there then I started following other creators that I found um, and I mentioned Alex Otos who's I think my favorite streamer I was like, watching a bunch of his streams and then from there you start hearing the reference things they have other products that they're showing during the stream so you start looking them up and like where did that come from where did that come from and now, like six weeks later, I'm, I've spent a bunch of money uh, on amazing keyboard products. I have stuff that's in the works. 
Uh, I have things that I'm going to get in a year from now because that's one of the things you like pre-order stuff, right? It's called group buys. So everything's by pre-order, kind of like Kickstarter, really. Um, and yeah, I'm in like 10 different discords. Everything happens in Discord in the mechanical keyboard hobby. Like, there's so much stuff happening on. All right, so I know you want to know about this, but it's not yet. But I'll tell you what this is. No, no, I'll give you the story about it a little more in a bit. This is called a Rama M6. And these keycaps are part of the cat milkshake set. But I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail in a bit because I have a, a, a larger keyboard that actually matches with it. So the next, so after this, right? So there's like a long gap uh, until a couple of weeks ago when I ended up kind of investigating a little more. So let me get rid of this guy. For the moment, we can we can pack Mr. Digma away again. How often do I change keyboards? Not that often at the moment because I I haven't. I don't think like I have so many that I would be changing. Um, but I have multiple places where I can be using keyboards. So I have my office at home, and then I have two desks in the studio here. So. Once everything's fully up and running, I will actually be using like three keyboards at a time anyway. So I actually get the opportunity to use a lot of different stuff, which I like. Yeah, I could actually call the podcasting desk the podcastle because it, that's a good idea. I think I'm going to have to take that because it's here. And so it's like, it's got, it's got four to, was it fortifications anyway? So yeah, there we go. So thank you for christening the, the podcasting cave. We've got the podcastle going on behind me. So the desk that I'm sitting on right now is going to be my working, just everyday working desk. And it's going to be split into two. I'm going to have a Mac. It's also where I'll edit from too. And an iPad station. Although what I am thinking now is what I'm talking to, this is the desk I'm talking to you from now. Uh, I actually would like to do more of this kind of stuff and it wouldn't be too difficult for me to have a, just a couple of cameras in this area of the desk and still have more than enough space to do the other things that I want to be doing on it. So I might be able to get a more permanent Twitch streaming set up from, from here. I have yet to mention, because I've been too busy talking about my story, why we're even here today. And it's because we're raising money throughout September for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You can see up in the top corner here that we've raised over $162,000 for St. Jude so far in September because of your kind donations. Uh, St. Jude is an incredible place where not only do they treat children with cancer at the hospital, no family has to pay for the care for the children that are admitted to St. Jude, and they get the very best care. But St. Jude is also a research institution. And over the 50 years of St. Jude being around, the childhood cancer survival rate has gone from 80% to 20%. And St. Jude has the, the mission that no child should die of cancer. And they're going to keep going until they make that a reality. So you can go right now to stjude.org slash relay and donate money. Uh, our goal is $315,000 and we are over halfway now. Uh, when we hit 184,000 and something dollars, we actually will have raised half a million um, over the last two years, which is a, a really incredible, just like really, really incredible number. And that is all because of your very, very kind donations. So please do consider to give. Um, and uh, yeah, it's $184,670.44, says the very kind St. Jude chatbot there. Uh, so once we hit that, we've raised half a million over the last two years, which is an, a really just absolutely fantastic thing that we've all been able to do together. And that's why we're here today. We're here to talk about wonderful consumerism things. But while we're doing that, we should also be considering donating some money. Um, and I will be making another donation, uh, which I'll tell you about in a little bit because there's this little story behind it. So then... I move on to um, Drop. Now, people in the pen community may be familiar with Drop. They used to be called Mass Drop. And as well as pens, one of their big markets 
is uh, mechanical keyboards and they make their own products. They sell products from creators. As is with everything mass drop related, there's a little bit of controversy around them sometimes. Um, uh, St. Jude is, I believe, the patron saint of lost causes. Is that it? I don't remember. I think that's it, if I remember rightly from my tour. Uh, so drop do their own keyboards and I wanted to pick up one of those as like a um, a keyboard to play around with and so I got this one this is called the drop alt now there's a couple of things going on with this keyboard here well if the camera will stay in focus one thing I actually do really like about this keyboard is it's got RGB going around the outside as well as inside pretty well illuminated right now which is why you're not seeing a lot of the RGB um, now, I also have a key set here called Astrolo Keys. Uh, now, this is a key set that was pretty popular, and sometimes when a key set becomes really popular and it has its initial group buy, um, there it ends up going into a larger production sometimes, and they end up with extras. And this key set, they had a bunch of extras uh, available on Mass Drop, on Ma Drop, and they've done this a bunch of times. Uh, the Novel Keys NK65. Uh, I haven't looked at the Novel Keys NK65 Thunder Viking. I think Novel Keys are doing a milkshake NK product at some point, and which I'm, I'm probably going to pick that one up. Um, you'll understand the milkshake thing in a little bit. So I wanted to go with this. This uh, I really like this key set, and these are um, something I hadn't mentioned before. This, there are different types of keys uh, profiles. So you'll notice if you look that these are all the same level. And that's called, um, I think this is DSA. I think that's that's what it is. Whilst the Digma was cherry and they're like much thicker and they have, um, they, they kind of, they, they, they stack down. I don't have, I put it away now, but they're like, they have different heights, but I have another keyboard to show you in a minute that, that is not Cherry, but is a, is Cat, K-A-T, which also has a staggered height. Um, you'll notice as well, I'm new to this hobby, so there's a lot of stuff that I, I'm trying to learn, but uh, am I going to get the Blip MT3 Extended 2048 from Drop? I am going to try and get that set. Yes, this is a set which is inspired by a bunch of old Mac uh, kind of iconography. I'll sh I'm going to get this one up and I'll show you on my phone because it looks really cool. Um, 2048, is that what it's called? MT3, whoops. Uh, we'll get there in a second. It's taken too long here for me to find this thing for you. All right, so this is the the page on Drop, and you can kind of see it here, but. All right, it's not gonna do that. These are keys that look like old Mac keys. Can you see it? Anyway, you can find it. It's called the Extended 2048. Uh, and yeah, I'll probably get that because I think it will look great on a, a keyboard for a Mac. Um, but anyway, I got this from this from Drop. I loved the colorway. I'm trying to get this camera to stop searching for focus. Um, I really like the colorway. Um, the, the standard set has like astrology related novelty keys, which wasn't for me so much. Um, I just liked the, the colors and wanted to have a keyboard with those colors on it. Yeah, I'm sorry about the focus hunting. Um, I did actually request for this camera to stop trying to autofocus, but that didn't work. If it keeps doing that, I think I might be able to, to stop it in a minute. I can try and tinker around some settings. So I got this keyboard in and these keys at the same time. I bought them both from Drop, right? And I put it all together and you may notice you come over here and something terrible has happened. 
So this is a 65% uh, keyboard um, because it has that, that's just what this size is called. And 65% has the arrow keys and these keys here on the side. And the key set that I bought, you could buy them in kind of in packs. I wasn't really paying attention and I ended up without keys for this shift because it's a smaller shift than this one, right? Which they do so they can fit the arrow keys in. And also it didn't have arrow keys that were this shape and size. Um, so I ended up just salvaging some stuff and putting it on there. I will move this to, to another board at some point where I can actually fill out the whole keys and put a different key set on here. But for the time being, I really wanted this uh, to be all together. These keys are Rama keys that came from this Rama M6. So these were on here before. We can now move to this. So this type of keyboard is called a macro pad because it is tiny. That You can get macro pads. They go from kind of like a couple of keys up to like a full number pad. Um, and I wanted, I, saw, I had been seeing this online a lot. I'd been seeing a lot of people posting pictures with these things in the background. And yeah, so someone saying in the chat, it's frustrating that so few sets include command keys. Typically, command keys, or like Mac keys, as they're called typically, are um, they're actually typically part of an extra. So like you would get the base kit and then also some extras that include Mac keys. A lot of key sets have what, like code or super, and you can just replace them out for one or the other, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I really, I'd seen these and absolutely loved these uh, tiny little um, macro pads that Rama make. And Rama is a pretty high-end keyboard maker. There's a couple of these companies that are referred to as like the Apple of keyboards. There's this one, Rama, and another one called Keycult. Now, I just wanted to go to Rama's website and buy one of these, but that was not possible because this was these were sold a while ago. They sold out, and then your only way to get it is on the aftermarket. Now, there's a really good Reddit called um, Mac Market. I think that's a subreddit or it's a website, but I'm uh, I'm in a Discord. What is the name of the Discord? Let me find out the mech group buyers discord and the mech group buyers discord feeds the uh, reddit into it which i find really useful so you can see things that are happening and one of these came up for what i thought was a good price it was a price that i was willing to pay um, and this was in pretty good condition there's one issue with this which is that the the bottom this is silicone here and it's kind of warped a little bit so at some point I will buy when they when Rama have stock I will buy a new little backplate for it but it's it doesn't harm me yeah it's r slash mech market as Ian is saying in the chat so I just saw these thought they were super beautiful and figured like I could have a bunch of uses for for a little key set like this so one would be I would actually use this instead of my stream deck that's one potential because I can set the macros to be these instead so. I would switch from camera to camera by doing this, right? Another would be, um, and I'm actually going to do this, I think, when I have it all, when I have my like full on editing set up here, rather than, yeah, I've gone a little bit in between right now. I have a bunch of keys programmed into a Wacom tablet that I only use sometimes, but I thought it would be super nice as I'm using my Wacom pen to have my hand here and that's where I could pause and unpause, I could cut in the tracks, I could select all, I could delete. So a lot of people do that. You'll set like macros to these types of things that and you you know and you go with it from there, right? And it works pretty nicely. And and I was super happy with it. I wanted a Rama board though, like a full Rama keyboard. But again they're only on aftermarket and they're expensive. And this is called the M. This is the M6 6 in the milk colorway. A couple of days after I bought this, I saw a listing come up for a Rama M80 in the milk colorway with the ability to get a full set of this keycap set. It's called Cat Milkshake. And I really wanted that keyboard set. 
So, you have to give me a second, because this thing's pretty heavy. Yeah. So after consulting with the chief financial officer of my home and agreeing to sell off some old technology products that I'm not in use of, I arranged the funds to procure this beast, which is the Rama M80 Milk. And I absolutely love this keyboard. So this is um, an 80% keyboard. I believe that's what the 80 stands for, but it's also uh, called Tankyless. So you'll notice that it's got the full typical set. We have detached arrow keys. These would be like your page up, page down, home, and all that kind of thing. Full function row, but no number pad. It has 80 keys. I absolutely love this keyboard. It is so friggin' heavy because it has this brass, polished brass weight in the back. I think it's brass. I don't remember now, but that's a, that is just like a big fat piece of metal in the back. And then that is aluminum. And I, I will not say exactly how much this went for, but I have been keeping my eye on the prices since, and I feel like I got a pretty good deal because I am paying about 10 or 20%. I paid about 10 or 20% less than what I've seen them be going for recently. So I'm pretty happy with it. In here right now, the switches that I have are Gatoron Milky Yellow. So I also went and found a few bags of switches from uh, a website called keys.my and I ended up buying some novel key creams, some Gatoron Milky Yellow. So like this is apparently like, again, forgive me. There's like a switch called Gatoron Yellow and it's like an adapted version of that. Um, did I get any others? I did. Uh, I also got Gatoron Black. So this is just like, these were switches that had been recommended and I wanted to try them out. I tried them all out and there I didn't find a huge difference between them all. Like I could feel a difference, but not a huge difference. And I liked the way that the yellows felt the most. Um, so I ended up putting the yellows into here um, and I've got a couple of different switches in here right now. So I'm like, it's also fun as a switch tester. You can put different switches in and kind of see how they feel. Oh, I haven't done any sounds. Oh my gosh. Wh who allowed me? All right, we're going to move this thing out of the way, this beast out of the way for a second. And we're going to bring back the alt. And we're going to do a sound test of the alt. But I know you're going to love the sound test. So before I give you the sound test, I want to tell you a little bit more about St. Jude. So we are raising money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital now and throughout September because September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, on all of our shows, you may have seen the branding for Relay FM has changed to like a beautiful golden yellow, and that is the color of Childhood Cancer Awareness. Um, I think people are very familiar with pink for breast cancer, uh, but Childhood Cancer is yellow, and we're doing our part to try and uh, bring that awareness to people that like this is something that's in incredibly important, and September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and that's why we focus our efforts for fundraising for St. Jude right now. Um, next Friday... Right from here, I will be here from 2 to 8 p.m. Eastern doing the second annual Relay FM podcast-a-thon for St. Jude. Stephen's going to be in Memphis. I'm going to be here in London, and we're going to have wonderful guests calling in from all over the globe, some of your favorite Relay FM hosts, and we're going to be getting up to some wonderful hijinks as we try to raise even more money for St. Jude. So... Go to stjude.org slash relay right now and you can take part in helping us get there. Now let me mute music again. And we will bring in our friend, 
keyboard tester. I don't remember what switches I have in this keyboard. So let's find out. This keyboard came with this uh, switch puller. Uh, sorry, keycap puller that I really like. I have one, I have like a couple that have keycap on one side, switch on the other. But I like this one. Just as a, oh, missed. Ah, oh, I also have uh, browns in here, Cherry Amongst Browns. But it sounds and feels different because the keycaps are different, the board's a different type of design. But let's bring in our friend. This is the Alt, the Drop Alt ALT. Listen to how different these sound. DMC, you only temporarily missed the UA. The UA is coming back, don't worry. This desk mat is made, um, is designed by uh, Alex Otos and was sold by, I think I got it from Odin Gaming. Yeah, so I have cherry, cherry browns in here as well. I have not yet lubed any switches, so this is like a whole other thing. So you can take a key switch, uh, a, a, a switch, right? One of these guys. So this is a switch, right? And you can take it apart. You need a tool to do it. And then all of the little pieces inside, so you've got springs and little pieces of plastic, right, that create the mechanism. You take, like, tiny paintbrushes and apply lubricant, and there's all kinds of lubricants. Now, I haven't done any of that yet because I'm waiting. I've ordered a, um, a switch kind of divider puller. I don't remember what they're called, but, like, you have to have a special tool to help you break open the switch. And then you can lube the, the key switches. So I'm going to do all of that. But I, I bought some brushes. And I, I when I got those bags of key switches, these ones. Anyway, when, when, when I got these, I also got some, some lubricant too. Crytox something, something, something. So I'm going to, yeah. Because that you can hear that not very consistent. So I will eventually, yeah, that's what I got. Crytox two or five grade zero for the switches, and I'm just gonna go with it for that. But um, I haven't decided what I will be moving up yet. <coughs> okay. So that's that one. So now we can go back to the U80 and we can see how different that sounds, which is quite different because I have, I actually have a uh, different switch sound here. Yeah? Oh my God, the whole camera shook. It's like Jurassic Park when this thing rolls in. You hear how different that is? So I have Gatoron yellows which are a, I think, is it linear switch rather than a tactile switch? Like, I, I'm very actually excited at the prospect of looping these switches and seeing how they sound. You'll see there's a shine coming through here. Do you see that? There's like a, a, a plate, like a, a really shiny plate underneath. This keycap set. So this keycap set, I'm going to give you a better look at it. I'm going to use my arms here. It's called Cat Milkshake. But I have what's called the Weirdos set. So you'll see like that the alphas, that the letters are peculiarly printed. Like they're not complete. It's a super fun. And so I ended up getting like, I got like a, the guy that I bought the keyboard from also had these for sale. I had the fruits, which is these. These were modifiers, like optional parts. I got the weirdo set, and then I got the uh, the modifier set. So I ended up getting like 
It's they don't again. I didn't. They actually had a Mac set with that was available with this, but the guy didn't have it. So I would have been able to get a command key, but instead I have this like little weird circle guy. Weirdo alphas. I was I was concerned that like I wouldn't be able to remember where all the keys were, but I've been doing pretty great with it. And you can there's a there's a program for the Mac and PC called Via Via V I A where you can go in and program them. So like I've programmed these keys. So these are media keys, these do screen brightness, I've got volume and all that kind of stuff over here. And what I really like about that is it programs it to the keyboard. So if I plug this into my iPad or any other computer, it remembers those settings. This is actually the second round of, of milkshake already. It's a super popular board, uh, cat, key cap set. I think they'll keep doing it again. So the guy who um, designed this also designed the uh, extended, the Mac, like the Mac extended 2048 set that I showed you earlier. It's a super cool designer. Um, and I also ordered another set that they made called Bento, which is really cool. But that's going to come sometime the end of the year, maybe. Let me see if I can show you the RGB in this thing. Yeah, you can barely see it. No, it's just too bright in here. The RGB on this is great. It has a bunch of settings. I don't think I can get it. Even if I turn the lights off in this office, it would be too bright, I think. Because it's daylight outside. Well, I absolutely adore this keyboard. It's an absolute beast, but I love it. Give it a little bit more. Type. Whoa, I just turned on sticky keys. Because <laughs> it's plugged in now. Let me unplug it again. So, do it. so uh, the stabilize so larger keys like these, they have stabilizers, and the stabilizers on this keyboard were lubricated, so they sound much nicer than the other keys. So that's why I'm excited about the possibility of lubing these. So I'm going to do that. There's a lot of stuff you can do in this hobby. So like you can be a like just a person like and you buy things and you buy pre-built things or you buy things that are easy and, and I, you know, that's cool. And that seems to be the type of way that I would usually go. So like you end up with um, what they call like hot swap boards. This is a hot swap board, for example. And I think mostly I will want to be able to do that because that means you can take the, the switches out and change them. Um, or you can, oh, so people asking, I am going to put the video on demand up of this on my YouTube channel. So this video, um, if you're watching now and you need to bail, uh, I'm going to put the entire video up on uh, my YouTube channel. So, and I'll, I'll post that out on Twitter and stuff when it's up. Um, so you can get like hot swap switches, which means you can just take out the switch and put in a new one. And it's great to be able to try stuff around and it's easy, right? But um, there's also salt soldering, so where you basically solder the switches to the PCB, so the circuit board, and that's that, right? And you can take them off, but it's more of a, a thing. And I, I want to do all of it. And I actually have, so my, my thought was, I, I have, I found this website called Board Source, B-O-A-R-D-S-O-U-R-C-E dot X-Y-Z. And they sell these little kits. And I'm going to get some of those kits and do some practicing. I'm going to learn how to solder and I'm going to put some stuff together with the idea that I would build up to getting a like more expensive board and really like putting it together start to finish, like getting one of the, the, uh, the sets that go up for sale. They have like short-term buys and then go for it. But then... A listener called Reese reached out to me today. 
a few days ago and said, so you were doing the keyboard stream and I had this keyboard that I wanted to um, put up for uh, an auction at some point for a charity. And I thought that you know, St. Jude would be a good way to do it. But I really love what you guys are doing and I want to send something to you. Um, and it's called the Think 6.5 which is another 65% keyboard and it's considered to be like one of, you know, it's one of the favorites of many of the streamers that I follow. So resent this to me and I'm going to make a donation uh, because of that. So I'm going to make another donation myself. And it's from a company called Gray Studio. They uh, designed it. This is it in the box. And it's, you know, basically I'm just showing you this now. And at some point in the future, I would love to be able to to build it. Will I have links in the description on the YouTube release? Probably not. But everything is incredibly Googleable that I've mentioned. So this is the keyboard. It's in the E white colorway. E white with uh, a black brass plate on the back. And this board, I think, is the colorways reference to Stormtrooper because it's white and black. And this is the PCB, which it looks beautiful, just like a slightly purple PCB, PCB, and that's the Gray Studio logo in there. So yeah, this is, I think, 6.5. Again, it's another 65% uh, because it has the arrow keys and then that here. And I absolutely love this thing. And one day, this is going to be a great build from me. So I will be taking it all apart, taking the PCB, this thing, putting all the switches into it, soldering the switches, putting in the stabilizers, which I got over here, all these little things for the larger keys. Yeah, like this is a long-term project for me, but uh, I'm very lucky to, to have this. So um, like so a couple of days ago, Steven did a stream where he installed um, wheels onto his Mac Pro. And then at the end of that stream, he donated um, $700 to absolve himself of the guilt of having bought the wheels. So I'm going to make a $700 donation as well um, in uh, as a thanks or in honor for Reese's donation of this keyboard to me. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for it. And... Uh, it's a, you know, so thank you to Reese. And at some point in the future, I hope to build this on on a stream. So I really love this thing, and I'm super excited to have it. But I'm now gonna have to. I got I got a little learning to do, ladies and gentlemen, before I can build something like that. Need nor would I want to let myself near it, right? <laughs> so. You want me to do the donation now? Okay, I can do the donation now. Let's go back to the main camera so I can actually do it. Uh, okay. Maybe some of you can donate along with me by going to stjude.org slash relay. And yeah, I'm going to get some soldering practice sets and stuff like that. Like, I really want to do it right. And yeah, DMC, you know you know I'm going to hit you up if I need help. Filling in donation information. Face ID, Apple Pay. Done. So Maxed Feelings asking, when did I buy my first mechanical keyboard? It was, I think, towards the end of last year was when I did that. <coughs> so yeah, Board Source is a really cool website, and you can find a bunch of uh, a bunch of fun things on there. 
Do I still use my folding phone, my Z Flip? Yeah, but at home mostly. It's my Android phone. I use it frequently to just tinker around, see what's going on with Android and stuff like that. Now saving my receipt for later. Just send it to me by email. There we go. So thank you to Reese for uh, sending that that keyboard to me and uh, spurring me on to make another donation. So I've also got this little guy. All right, so you see how they match? Isn't it beautiful? Now they're friends and they match like that. So we have some different switches in this right now. Right. And these are, because Reese also sent me these too. I don't remember the name of these switches now. I think he said they are T1 switches, I think. And that is this one. T1 or T2, people are saying. So I really want to put these in a, in a keyboard too. They are, they're, it's, a, it's a tactile switch, I think. I can feel how different it is. Yeah, so J.W. Hamilton, this is a dangerous game. Like you, you you start watching this stuff and, and you want to buy all of it. And that's how I got here because I started watching a couple of keyboard streamers and then couldn't help but get into it. But I really do like the a lot of the stuff that goes into this hobby. I'm enjoying learning. Um, and, you know, I, I a typical way for me to start a new thing is I go in super heavy on it and I want if it's especially if it's a hobby that has some kind of purchasing part to it I buy a bunch of stuff that I'm interested in and then I cool off and that's kind of where I am now it's like now I'm being much more considered about my purchases but I like to like get started um, and so now I have gotten started and this is where I am so I'm now surrounded by beautiful keyboards um, and I've got uh, so Stu is asking, is this going to be one of my hobbies that I don't turn into work? I mean, for me at the moment, I'm thinking it's most like, so here's the thing. I don't, I have no interest in starting a mechanical keyboard podcast. I don't want to do that. But I do like the idea of things that I would be doing around this hobby, maybe doing this with. So in the future, if I'm putting together a keyboard, like maybe I would want to do that on stream, right? Because I think that that would be fun to do. So, uh, I'm ex I thoroughly expect to turn this hobby into some kind of content, but I don't want to turn it into the type of content that I do for a living. But I, I enjoy this, like I enjoy sharing. Um, and this is something that I like, I, like it's very visual and I can share it. And You know, I like the idea of if like, because some of this stuff can take a long time. Like if I was taking all these keys off, putting new switches in, if I was looping the switches, it could take hours. So doing it on stream could be fun. Yeah, and I recommend, as Ian is in the chat, like the Keychron. Keychron, is a, they are like pumping out products constantly, but they also have like their keyboards are in stock and that's not something that is always a thing. You know what, while we're here, I wanna see what these T1 switches are like in here. So why don't we do, some, we can do some comparisons. We'll get this. Oh my God, move in this Rama, I need more muscles for that. So none of these are lubed, I don't think. I don't remember if these were, let me check. These are the novel key creams. They are not lubed. I'm trying to remember now if we said whether they lubed these. I don't think so. Don't think so. Oh, so Sarah asking if I would show Adina's uh, peaches and cream key. Her keyboard is at home, so I don't have that to show. 
but that was a set that I also saw that set go up on Mac Market and wanted to grab it because it was like I knew she'd love the colors and I thought it would be funny and it is. Um, and then JW Frosty's looking. Have I had any RSI issues with any of this stuff? Right. So no. I but I've also gone in really easy with this. So that was why, like I mentioned earlier, I used the sculpt keyboard before that like put my hands at an angle like this, right? And I thought that that was great for me. And I ended up getting a mechanical keyboard, the Digma Rays, which did that too. And then as I started to move into more typical keyboards, I stuck with just the cherry brown switches because I knew that they were good for me because they don't take a lot of force to press down. And then the switches that I bought, the when I got the creams, the yellows and the blacks, they were um, different types of switches, but like with increasing uh, uh, actuation force. And I've just been seeing how they're going and so far I've had no issues with them. Uh, Max Feelings is asking, are there any new keyboards you're looking forward to? Yes, the the Rama, um, Rama are making like a, I think it's a polycarbonate board. Is it, I can't remember what it's called, but that's what I that's what I want. So these are the T1s, I believe. Kara is the name of the board, and they have a key set that's called K, which looks fun too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out some of these keys, and we can see how they uh, sound in this board. So this has cherry browns in it right now. I want to just see how it sounds and feels. Oh man, yeah, this. Oh my god, I've noticed this before that like they really like they they jam these things in here. I, I want to swip this and turn it to horror. Oh my word. There we go. I've worked it out. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, and I worked it out. I had to pull it the wrong way. All right. Oh, the music. I keep forgetting about the music. I'm probably going to go to a typing test super soon anyway. Yeah. Good UK based stores. So one of the good things about this hobby is that most big products, products of any kind of size, they, they're typically done through proxies. So you might have a company like the key company selling a key set and they're doing a group buy and they're based in America, but they'll work with proxy companies in Europe, in um, Asia, so you can get those products from a local shipping. Through that, I found a one company that I like called Prototypist. But one of the problems is like none of these places really have things in stock very often, which is kind of just the way it goes at the moment. Uh, we have a pretty aggressive bot in the chat that, that stops URLs. So you kind of have to write them out a little bit. Sorry. All right. So. Cherry brown. Cream. ones. Ooh, I like that. Oh, good question from Jillian in the chat. So we, we have a challenge that we're doing that's a typing related challenge. I think I'll probably use the Rama. You'll have to tune in for that. We have a wild typing related challenge with me versus Steven. Oh, 
Oh, we're being raided right now, which is fun. I'm playing around with some keyboards and raising money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I like the way this one sounds and feels. It's got a kind of like a clickiness to it. Like a thunk compared to this. Yeah, so if you're joining us right now, thank you for doing that. Uh, you can go to stjude.org slash relay where we're raising money for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Uh, it's Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in September, and we're raising money for children with cancer and because St. Jude is an incredible place that w does not charge the families for that are in their care and also does incredible research as well that they spread to institutions all over the world to help defeat childhood cancer. And I'm doing one of the most ridiculous things that somehow goes along with that, which is just typing with a keyboard. I like this, this set, this set of these switches. I can feel it's a lot more force needed than the Jerry Brown. So I might use those as something. I don't know what yet, but I want to play around a bit. The Q is the T1, yeah. The Q is the T1, the W was the creams, and the E was the cherry brown. It sounded good, felt good too. Whoops, just popped right out of there. How useful. What I like is having choice. So I'm not going to make any decisions yet because I have uh, some switches called Kiwis from the Key Company on the way. They're like stuck in the mail somewhere. And I want to do a little bit of a shootout because that's a, a key set that I'm really interested in. Oops. I see, look, I bent the pen. pen no, if you see this, I bent the pen a little on this one. Just bend it back, try and get it in there. Perfect. This table, so this is a desk mat. So this is a bamboo table underneath. But this is like a really popular thing in the mechanical keyboard hobby is to get these desk mats. And a lot of the popular key switch, like key caps, they have matching desk mats that go along with them. Um, and so like it's a way to, there's, there's, there are some like genuine benefits. Like you can actually help the keyboard feel like sound nicer because it's got some like, and also it gets like some vibration um, dampening with these. So there are benefits to using them, but I just think that it makes the keyboards look so much nicer when they have a cool design behind them. Bring back my friend. Oh my god, here it comes. I love how it makes the camera rock. I've got the camera on a boom arm, like a microphone boom arm. You know what, while we're here, why don't we... I want to see what the T1 sound like in this thing. Ooh, yeah, I could put it on the space bar, huh? That's a good idea. Never really know how to remove the space bar. Look at that. 
Wait. Oh, no. Oh, that's a, they've got some good suggestions for removing the space bar. This is the milky yellow, empty one. I would have to get used to that for sure. I wouldn't want to put these in this board right now. Like that is definitely a much more force needed. Yeah, maybe they'll feel, I'm sure they'll feel different when they're blue too, but. I'm looking forward to like what it's gonna feel like, like the difference between the lubed and unlubed, like what it will sound like and stuff, because I haven't had that experience yet. I think it'll be fun. I mean, like you can, I can already, like this is like, that's lubed and this isn't. Oops. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So when you do it this way, would you just use your hands to pull it out? Oh yeah, that was way easier. And then this whole thing came out. So Doug Trio, um, I agree, like there is a fear of breaking stuff, but I kind of just go for it and I haven't broken anything significantly yet. And plus with the switches that I've bought, I just buy more than I need. So like, and then I'm not, I don't feel too worried about the, right. So you see, I'm assuming your name is Chi Elf because that's what it says. If we're thinking of Chi Chi, about this being bizarrely captivating. This is what got me into it. I just was like, oh, I want to see what one of these Twitch streams is all about. And I watch now like a couple of hours of a week of like of this kind of stuff. And I use it as kind of like passive viewing. So like I might be doing something else. And yeah. Stupak, will I be cleaning my keyboards over time thinking about your fountain pens? Yeah, I'm not a very good cleaner of my fountain pens. I, I am I want to I have not yet looked into like what are the best methods for keeping these things clean. I'm sure there's like a lot of compressed air. But yeah, but my other thought is like I'll be taking them apart and doing stuff to them anyway, so I'll be cleaning them out at those points. But aren't they a cute little pair, these two? So I want to show you something that I did, which is so, it's a very me thing. Do you see how I, these are different, but I matched the colors. I just felt like I had to do that. Yeah, so for me right now, there's a few streamers that I've been enjoying. Uh, Teha Types, Alex Otos, Mentally, and Apiary Keyboards. Um, there's some streamers that I've been enjoying right now. But Alex Otos is, is somebody whose streams that I'm watching all of. I really, I really like his, like, his positivity and his vibe. I didn't change the W. The W was still... It was the Gator on Yellow, Milky Yellow. This is a macro pad of micro pad called the Rama M6, and this is the Rama M80. So they're like big brother, little brother or something. 
Um, I really like the JO one, but I didn't go for it um, because I bought this thing. I didn't want to spend more money on a keyboard right now. The JO one is cool because it has like a brass bar across it, which is a, like a pen rest, which is cute. The Elite Four of keyboard streamers. Yeah, I think I don't think I've I've unearthed anybody that people aren't aware of, but like they're they're the people that I've been that I'm watching. Yeah, this is a UATA and M six A, both in the milk colorway. I really like Rama stuff. I like their branding. I like kind of their whole aesthetic. Um, I don't have the micro pad set to do anything. Oh no, M six C, M six C. Um, I don't have the Rama pad set to do anything yet, but it will be. I've, I think I'm going to set it up to be some editing shortcuts when I'm using Logic. Finish my ice latte. I think that's all I have to show you. But I'm having fun hanging out, so if there's anything else we want to talk about, we can do that for a little bit. I'm kind of in this, you know, like you get in that weird spot where you've got two big events on your calendar in a day and I'm now like stuck between them because the next one doesn't start for like another hour and 45 minutes. Yes, I really want the round two of the Satisfaction 75. So the Satisfaction 75 is a keyboard with a knob on it, which is just fantastic. I think, and it has a little OLED screen too. Let's see if I can find a good picture of it for you. Oh yeah, DMC, you sent me a picture the other day, didn't you? We've been talking a lot about keyboards in the Discord. You sending me again? Yes. Yeah, this is great. So this is DMC who's in the chat. This is his Satisfaction 75. So it's a 75% board, but it has this knob, which you can program for like volume and stuff, and a little OLED screen, which I think you can like hack and put stuff on, or you can just have it show you things about the keyboard. But you'll see that DMC is as bad as me. Look, there's a Rama there. You gotta get some uh, cool keycaps on that Rama DMC. And what is this thing? What is that? What is that? Romac, it says on it. So I, I have some keyboard enablers, including DMC and Sam in the in the Relay FM members Discord. Where do you get a Romac Plus from? Brad is slowly getting into keyboards. Brad is my co-host on the Pen Addict, and we just had a big conversation about them a couple of weeks ago. Because there's this like real crossover between the hobbies. Oh, that's amazing. Guys in the chat put a game of Snake on the OLED screen of their keyboard. That's amazing. How stressed am I going to be for the next week? I can't even tell you. So... Obviously, I had, I had a lot going on this week. I just had to do a really big editing job, but I got that done today by like coming to the office super early for the past two days to make sure I had it out of the way because I had this on the on the Canada too today, which is a big event I've been preparing for. And this weekend, we're actually doing a long weekend for a family function thing. It is it is a big birthday in my family, so I wasn't going to be around like for serious work stuff on Friday and Monday. Now there's an Apple event on Tuesday. We're recording two episodes of Upgrade next week. We're doing a draft on Monday and then a keynote reaction video on Tuesday. Then there's a couple of more meetings that I've, I can't get out of next week whilst also preparing for the podcast a -thon, which is happening on Friday next week. So pretty stressed is the answer to how stressed 
Uh, <laughs> great day, but <laughs> Monday had another meeting on Tuesday. Did a keyboard stream on Wednesday. Um, what are some group buys that I'm waiting to deliver? GMK Future Funk. That was my first group buy. So that was pretty early on in my uh, keyboard hobby. I don't even know how it came about that. I think I saw it on Instagram. And I was like super surprised about it because it was like, wait, how long do these things take to deliver? So <laughs> GMK Future Funk and uh, Bento. I think they're my only two group buys. Yeah, GMK is the name of a company that makes keycaps. They're a German company and their timelines are slipping, slipping, slipping because they're so overwhelmed with the orders that are going through. So. Apart from aesthetics, just based on the fear or sponsorship, build and reliability, what keyboards might you recommend for a great keyboard? So, Micah, I would, for me, like, I don't have, like, a ton of, of knowledge, but I definitely recommend the Keychron keyboards, like the K6, this one. They're fair priced. They have a bunch of options that aren't too complicated to understand. Um, I really like the way that it feels. Um... Yeah, I'm 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 really happy with this keyboard and it has this one that I got. I don't know if they're all that I will work Bluetooth or cabled, you can choose. Uh Deuces in the chat is asking if I recommend KBD fans. I will let you know because uh, I didn't have the KBD fans keyboard on the way. And I'll let you know what it's like when it comes in. MDA keycaps. Uh, yeah, this is MDA on this. MDA Nihon. I got this from a company called Flash Quark. So I have a bunch of different ones. I like I like the key keys that have um, that are staggered in the shape. There's a name for this that I've forgotten, but I like this more than the ones that are flat, like the DSA that I have on my drop. See how they're flat, the profile? sculpted versus whatever this is called, probably like uniform or something. Is Adina into the hobby or do you give her keyboards as an excuse to buy more? Uh, well, I guess it's probably a little column A, a little column B, but so it was, I had a spare, which was the WASD. And I was like, why don't you try this to see if you like it? And then I found that keycap set for the peaches and cream and I knew that she would find that fun. So I bought that for her and put it on that keyboard, and then she then wanted to get something that was more to her liking, plus she wants arrow keys. So what did we get from KBD fans? I think we got the, is it the Tofu? I'm checking my order history. Tofu 65, because um, it's like a frosted acrylic one, so it has RGB in it, and you can just see it through the whole way around. And also, like, I'd heard really good things about the Tofu, so I, I, I also want to try it, I like, see what it's like, but I hear a lot of good things about it, but it seemed like a good keyboard that she would enjoy, so... And like I wanted like the alt I wanted is like a um it's just like a workhorse kind of thing. Something that I could tinker around with, pull switches out, put other stuff in, and that seemed like a good uh good good option. Yeah, so Chi I was saying it should do more non gaming streams. I enjoy this a lot. So like I've been doing I did one of these a couple of weeks ago showing off my iPad stuff. Um and I had a really great time with it. So I, I'm thinking it's something that I will want to uh, do more of now I have this space. So after the podcast the is done, um, I'll be able to focus on actually having this space set up more the way that I want it to be going forward. It's a little bit ad hoc right now because I need areas in this space to be purpose fit for the podcast a -thon. Once that's done, I can disam disassemble some of that and set things up and to be more permanent. And one of the things that I want right now is to, so this desk that I'm on right now, I'm only occupying half of it. 
one half of it will be where the Mac goes, then one half of it will be like where my iPad slash other stuff can go. And at the moment, I want that to include a permanent setup for this stuff. And because of the podcast-a-thon, I've ended up buying lights and cameras and all kinds of stuff. So, All right, I'm sorry to say that I am starting to lose my voice a little bit, which in my line of work is uh, an occupational hazard. So I think I'm going to call it an end for the day. I have absolutely loved hanging out with you all. Um, and I really hope that you've enjoyed this chat today. Uh, please look out for more of this uh, in the future. I, d I will be doing more of this for sure. So I'll let you know to keep, keep it locked on all the social channels and stuff and I'll be promoting it. But I, I really want to thank everybody for coming and hanging out today. You've been an absolutely fantastic streaming audience. He's super great. Uh, please go to stjude.org slash relay right there and donate money. Um, and please join us on the 18th from 2 to 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash RelayFM. Make sure you hit the uh, follow button so you get notifications when we go live for the second annual podcast-a-thon for St. Jude. Um, and again, stjude.org slash relay. Thanks so much for hanging out, everyone. See you soon.